What are the abrogating and abrogated verses of the Qur'an? The Qur'an is unique among all the holy scriptures of other peoples, since it is the only one that allows the God of Muhammad, Allah, to keep changing his mind regarding his alleged revelations to Muhammad. Sorry to interrupt, do you mean that Allah revealed something to Muhammad and later on he changed the revelation? How is it conceivable for any God, any omnis omniscient God, not to know beforehand everything? You're right. As shocking a realization as this is, the fact is nonetheless that Muhammad's Quran contains abrogated and abrogating verses in 71 surahs out of 114, comprising 62.28% of all the surahs of the Quran that have had verses changed, overruled, or deleted. This shows Muhammad's Allah as bereft of foresight, with a fickle mind, and incapable of assessing the weaknesses and strengths of Muhammad or his followers. This is, of course, a blasphemous characterization of any omniscient divinity. Neither in the Hebrew Bible nor in the New Testament are there such verses. The God of Israel is not shown to give one command, one instance, and then changes it either immediately, shortly afterwards, or much later, because he did not realize that it was too onerous to be fulfilled by mere humans. The verse that allows Allah to abrogate was revealed in chapter 2, verse 106, which says, None of our revelations do we abrogate or cause to be forgotten, but we substitute something better or similar. Knows thou not that Allah hath power of, over all things? Why would any omniscient God not know beforehand the weaknesses or strengths of his creation? It is unadulterated blasphemy to impugn to the Almighty human weaknesses and vulnerabilities. Why would any Almighty God change his mind and replace earlier ordinances with others? Why would such a God especially replace earlier ones with similar ones? Why similar? Why not reveal the better ones from the very beginning? The reader is entitled to ask such questions that require intelligent and logical answers. Can any Muhammadan Muslim provide any logical answers? Chapter 4, verse 82. Do they not ponder over the Quran? Had it been the word of any other but Allah, they would surely have found a good deal of variation in it. Such discrepancy and incongruity. Those who check and scrutinize it will know it. The Qur'an is challenging the reader's intellect. The answers to the challenge are incredibly provided by the Qur'an and hadiths themselves, which are an enormous deal of variations is exactly what is found in the Qur'anic verses. There is also, of course, the issue of the satanic verses, which were repeated by Muhammad who did not recognize them as coming from Satan. It is as if by divine justice, that the Qur'anic challenge has been met and our case against the veracity and alleged divine origin of the Qur'an is rested. Chapter 13, 38 Ar-Rahman abrogates, blots out, or confirms whatever he wants. Chapter 16, 101 And when we exchange a verse in place of another verse, and Allah knows very well what he is sending down. The reader should be aware of the incredibly unusual transition in the verse above. From we exchange to and Allah knows. Why and how could Allah speak in the first person, we, at the beginning of the verse and then moving immediately and without any logical or grammatical reason to the impersonal and Allah in the second part of the same verse? It is precisely because Allah should very well know what he is sending down that he has absolutely no reason to change his mind and abrogate or make forgotten an earlier revelation. Even the illiterate and unlearned Arabs of Mecca found it intellectually and theologically fraudulent to believe in such a fickle, indecisive and fallible Allah. 
Since the Quran and its interpreters repeatedly mentioned the, the inviolability and eternal character of Allah's rules and regulations, how can they at the same time explain away the most controversial cases of the abrogated and abrogated surahs, which number 71, that is 62.28% of the Quran. In addition to the above anomaly, the reader should also be aware of the missing and forgotten verses that are mentioned in the Ahadith. Why and what for would Allah the Omniscient, the All-Knowing, change his mind at what he had already announced and replace it with one equal or better than the first? What would the purpose be of changing one for an equal? Why change it if it is only for an equal? Does Allah break his own promises and instructions? Does Allah hence have more than one preserved tablet in heaven? If so, which one of them is the correct one? It all sounds more than just blasphemy and mumbo jumbo. It is all an insult to the Almighty and to the intelligence of all human beings who accept such profanity and idiocy of a concept or dogma. All the abnormalities, ambiguities, stupidities, and contradictions in the Qur'an are instantly and summarily resolved when the listeners absorb and accept the simple and unchallengeable following conclusions. That there is not a single letter, let alone a word, a verse or a chapter in the Qur'an that could have been revealed by any omniscient, merciful or compassionate divinity. Because in reality, Every letter, word, verse, and chapter in the Qur'an is the product of Muhammad's imagination, his own personal alter ego, cleverly projected into the unsuspecting mouth of Allah, the supreme pagan rock god of Mecca, embedded into the corner wall of the Kaaba called the Black Stone. Allah, Gabriel, and Muhammad are one and the same. Muhammad used Allah and Gabriel as props to give his alleged revelations a cloak of sanctity and divinity. But in reality, it is all otherwise satanic and totally Muhammad's. Those who doubt what is being revealed here can read much more on our website, as well as when they read the following books written by the followers of Muhammad, such as al Suyuti's Al-Itqan Fi Ulum Al-Qur'an, Jamal al-Din al juzi in his Nawasikh al-Qur'an, Abu Ja'far al-Nakhas, al-Nasikh wal-Mansukh.